you know, we obviously, the tricuspid valve tends to be the forgotten valve a lot, but there's a lot that's going on in this space, and it's really exciting. And just like anything else, we're just starting to learn more about how to manage tricuspid regurgitation, especially from a structural heart standpoint. Um, again, like everything else in the structural space, we have to relearn all of our anatomy again and really drive it home because as we know in the structural space, anatomy is critically important to understanding how to um, intervene on valve dysfunction. I do have a couple of conflicts of interest. I do uh, some anatomic work with both of the valve companies. You know, on the spectrum of heart valve intervention, and this was, this, this shows mitral intervention, but it goes with tricuspid, we are becoming more and more per percutaneous. And as we become more percutaneous in our approach, the image guidance becomes even more and more critical. Our planning becomes more critical, and our knowledge of anatomy becomes more critical to our ability to achieve successful outcomes, which is one of the reasons why I think I've been asked to give this lecture. Just to quickly put us all back in the same spot, if you make a fist with your, with your left hand and have your right hand wrap around it like a glove, that's kind of how, that's how the right ventricle interacts with the left. And in fact, when we look at a heart, we look at the right ventricle wrapping around. If I were to take the right ventricle off, the left ventricle underneath would be a mirror image. And I think that's an important thing to keep in, in our thoughts when we're, in, when we're working, into the, working in the right ventricle is exactly the shape and the function of the right ventricle. The other thing from a purely image guidance standpoint is that the esophagus is far away. Um, the tricuspid valve may be difficult to image, especially in patients with aortic stenosis. Uh, the TE may not be as um, useful as it is in, the, say, the mitral position because we have to image through here. We may get shadowing or other things. And compared to the mitral valve, the tricuspid valve has much thinner leaflets. They don't show up as well, easier to tear. And so for those reasons, TE still is one of the primary drivers, but we may also be incorporating things such as for, from a guidance standpoint, transthoracic and ice. We also may, cons and then we also consider other imaging modalities to help us in diagnosing mechanism severity of TR. Just to quickly put things in perspective, uh, we have three leaflets. Typically, unlike this, what this netogram has, the anterior leaflet is typically the largest. I always point out a couple, I always like having anatomic markers that guide me when I'm looking at imaging. And the anatomic markers for me in the tricuspid valve are the septal and anterior leaflet commissure always points toward the aortic valve, and specifically the commissure of the non and right coronary cusp, because sitting under here is the membranous septum, the AV node, the bundle of His, and having, knowing this interaction helps you tremendously, especially when we have to switch from 3D to two-dimensional imaging and guiding where we are looking, what we are looking for. So I'm going to point that out. The other thing I'm going to point out, point out and come back to is the course of the, cor of the right coronary artery, and that becomes critically point, important, especially when we start working with my tri tricuspid annular procedures. We're looking in the right ventricle. First, the right ventricle doesn't make up the true apex of the heart. That's important. The other important piece is that the anterior papillary muscle is the most prominent and consistent papillary muscle with, a, with what we call a moderator band, which connects the, the anterior papillary muscle to the septum. Important pieces of information. If you look at this dissection, there again, it points, I point out a couple of things. The star, and these are, I've, I've uh, modified my slides a little bit. The new uploads, the new upload of my slides is going to be up before the end of the meeting. Um, this is the commissure of the non and the right. If you follow it down, here's the septal and anterior leaflet pointing toward that commissure of the septal and anterior leaflet. Here's your right atrial appendage, which is anterior, which is, which is typically associated with the anterior leaflet. You can nicely see this right coronary, and here is the right coronary in close association with the anus, but especially back here posteriorly. That right coronary can be very close to that posterior annulus of the tricuspid valve. Here's my coronary sinus. Again, another one of those key pieces, coronary sinus, posterior septal leaflet commissure, all right? So when I see coronary sinus, I know what I'm looking at in my annulus. I know what I'm looking at from a leaflet standpoint. This star just represents the right or posterior medial trigone. Um, you don't, the, the, the septal attachment of the leaflet tends to be, of the septal leaflet tends to be very stable. As you can see, it's along the ventricular septum where the anterior and posterior leaflets and that associated annulus is what dilates out over time. As I mentioned, the tricuspid valve is much thinner. Uh, it has, um, it's easier to tear. 
this coaptation line between the septal and anterior leaflet tends to be the longest. Uh, in my experience, it's one of the ones when we put clips on that we put clips on the most consistently. And just like in the mitral valve, I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep this up. For instance, in this commissure, you can see that the chordae tend to increase in number and density as you move toward the commissures in any of these leaflets. So lots of space to maneuver in the middle, but much more, much more dense chordae at the commissures, which also can be an important marker, again, for getting, having trouble, when we're, for example, with clip placement. This was a very nice article that kind of showed that intervention on the mitral side, the coronary, the circumflex artery is close to the mitral annulus, typically on the lateral portion of the annulus where the, P, where the P1 leaflet attaches. In the, in the tricuspid valve, it's two points. There's a point that is more anterior along the anterior leaflet and another point more posterior along the posterior leaflet attachment where that interaction between the right coronary and tricuspid annulus tends to be the closest. And a lot of it has to do with the dominance of the artery. A dominant right coronary artery will have, typically has closer uh, association with the annulus than say a non-dominant. This is a nice three-dimensional uh, showing kind of the anat nicely shows that anatomy in motion. Here's that largest anterior leaflet, the septal leaflet attachment, this is from the ventricular view, and the posterior leaflet, which can be, in, my, in, in most of my pieces, the posterior leaflet and septal leaflet, which one's bigger tends to be variable. And you can see here, this is um, a pacing wire coming through in that posterior commissure, which is another thing that we have to take into consideration when we're working on the right side, because obviously it's much more common um, in, the, in, uh, in right ventricular and uh, tricuspid intervention. Just so you can see from a gross anatomic standpoint, septal leaflet, anterior leaflet, moderator band. Again, when you're looking, when you're working around this anterior septal leaflet commissure up in here, again, cord density increases. Don't forget, you also have a moderator band underneath that may, that may have variable size that you have to deal with. So all these things come into play. The final piece I want to mention from an anatomic standpoint is here's the coronary sinus. Remember coronary sinus, again, think septal posterior leaflet commissure. The coronary sinus, septal leaflet attachment, and what we call the, the um, tendon of Todoro represent the triangle of Koch. The final thing that we always have to keep in mind is where that AV node is. And at the apex of that triangle is where the AV node sits and also where the bundle of His is. A lot of our tricuspid interventions work, again, at that septal anterior leaflet coaptation line and up near that commissure. It would be very, it's very easy to bump this in that intervention, which then can lead to um, complete heart block. And here it is, coronary sinus, septal leaflet attachment, AV node um, sitting in that area up in that region. All right, so just to conclude, to put a little bit of anatomy to, the, to this talk, um, there would be an imaging talk coming up, but I think it's important then to put everything together. Here is your septal leaflet, anterior leaflet, posterior leaflet, aortic valve up here. This is the orientation I typically use when I'm talking about anatomy of the aortic valve. I put the aortic valve on top. What's opposite the aortic valve is the posterior leaflet, and then you have the septal leaflet, an anterior leaflet. So aortic valve, posterior, septal, anterior leaflet. Remember coronary sinus, you can see very nicely the coronary sinus emptying with the septal posterior leaflet commissure sitting right there. Here's that commissure of the non and right coronary cusp with the septal leaflet and anterior leaflet commissure sitting right here. And if, we, if you think about this, this line I'm creating is typically our four chamber view. If I withdraw our probe, I'm moving up that commissure line toward the septal and uh, posterior leaflet, anterior leaflet commissure and along that coaptation line. If I advance the probe in a four chamber view, I move toward the posterior leaflet. That advancing and withdrawing the probe is a very powerful maneuver. If I change to what we call an inflow outflow view, again, when I look at my inflow outflow view and we'll see this, the aortic valve typically, whenever I see the aortic valve in my shot, I'm thinking this commissure and then opposite that will be the posterior leaflet. If we have what we call a modified bi bicaval view, typically you see the coronary sinus. Again, you know where you are in your anatomy. So using anatomy as your primary driver will help you in your interventions. This is, was a very nice summary of the anatomy that we, had, that, was, um, that we discussed. What are the things here, and this came from both of these articles listed below. 
right atrium is thinner, more distensible. The thing I would, I would state is that we're, we don't go through a septum for tricuspid procedures, so the um, device isn't anchored by the septum, which makes it easier to dive, and you have less coaxiality. Um, typically, one large, um, uh, again, the tricuspid annulus is much bigger with, and much more distensible. You have three leaflets. The leaflets are thinner and more fragile, which means it's easier for the leaflets to tear. Oops, sorry. Oop. And I missed my last slide, and I'm going to do it really fast. Um, actually, I can talk it through. Um, the other pieces are that, um, well, it's coming up. I don't think I can stop it anyways. <laughs> it's going to go fast. Um, the chordae, are, again, are thinner compared to the mitral side. Uh, they originate from various levels. You've got three papillary muscles with the anterior being most dominant. Um, again, remember when you go to the commissures, the catheter entrapment becomes much more uh, possible. And then the right ventricle, again, is thinner, easier to perforate. You have the presence of the moderator band, which is going to sit under that anterior septal leaflet coaptation uh, point, uh, which then you can then interact with. Um, the pulmonic and tricuspid valve we showed are, are widely separated, so you don't have typically the risks of RVOT obstruction like you would on the left-sided. And again, that crescent-shaped cavity, put your right hand over your left like a glove. That's the shape of the right ventricle. Thank you very much. Um, again, I think we have time for questions because uh, we're, I think we have a missing speaker. Um, so if anyone has questions, but I thought that was a phenomenal review, absolutely phenomenal. I think and important for us to think about um, when we're doing the interventions. Um, you didn't talk about the annulus per se. Um, what, what do you think about annulus and how robust uh, that tissue is? Um, well, the annulus is, is interesting compared. So challenges of the tricuspid annulus are, are multiple fold. One, it doesn't typically calcify like it does on the mitral side, so some of the interventions we do on the mitral side won't work on the tricuspid because the tricuspid annulus is very distensible. If you ever hold a, a heart and pull on the, where the anterior and posterior leaflets attach, it becomes very distensible, and in fact, that's the direction it typically dilates. In addition, remember the tricuspid annulus is much bigger than the mitral, so it's usually seven to nine centimeters squared. And you can imagine a patient with functional tricuspid regurgitation and a dilated annulus, it's bigger than nine centimeters. So that presents, presents additional challenges that we don't typically see on the mitral side. So you're not gonna get anything to anchor into an annulus. You're not going, you know, from a, like a replacement standpoint, it's gonna be much more challenging. Um, the other piece is because it dilates so much and you have three leaflets that you're dealing with, um, you could, your coaptation gaps can be quite large, which is another piece that's challenging that, we, that you'll see, I think, when we talk about clip therapy. A lot of times you can't grab, you can't put a clip on, on, the, on the largest gap because it's too wide for you to grasp. You typically have to go to one of those commissural areas and put a clip on there to make the gap smaller so you can put a second clip to solve the problem. So it presents a number of challenges that we, tip, that we see on the left, but the right presents additional things because of the anatomy and the way it presents. Excellent, thank you so much.